Hey, everybody. Uh, this week, Cody is on his third vacation this month. Um, <laughs> but thankfully, this network has no shortage of white co-hosts, so I have none other than Ben Kahn from the Trillionaire Mindset on today. Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me. I hope I can do Cody justice. I'm sure I won't. I'm sure I will fill him with this shame that my parents and whole family has felt. Fill him with shame? Yeah. That's what his uncle did. <laughs> <laughs> Skeet, skeet like a water hose. Or a sprinkler, rather. <laughs> yeah, we're starting there. He's skeet, skeeting like a water hose. Dude, let me tell you this stupid story. About the Rolex? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, sorry, fuck. <sighs> what story? <laughs> there you go. That's a great Cody impression. <laughs> <laughs> that was a great Cody impression right there, Thank dude. you. Nah, dude, so I, I was in Boston this weekend doing some fucking stand-up. Mm-hmm. It was a decent time. All right? I just want to add that context uh, because all the shows, the AC didn't work. Oh. Yeah, so it was me and the crowd, and we were, like, suffering, and I felt like 100. It was probably, like, 85 degrees, 90 degrees, and we just have that many people. And Humidity. Yeah. Hot breath. And they're all drunk. Yeah. So by the end of the show, they're just like, uh... I want to laugh, but it just it sucks too much. Yeah. So whatever. I get out on the last night of, you know, the three day run. It was a super hot, weird vibe in there on the very last show. Um, I think it was like a lot of people that came solo, so they were a little bit like, I don't know, awkward when laughing out loud. So I was just already feeling strange. The venue was kind of strange. Everything is weird. Walk inside the venue, and there's a guy waiting out there with his girlfriend. And I'm just thinking, like, oh, maybe he wants to grab a picture. So I go up to him. He's like, hey, man, great show. I'm like, hey, appreciate it. Talk for like a minute or so. And then he's just like, uh, here, man, I want you to have this. And he just hands me this watch. Wow. So I'm like, uh, <laughs> I'm like, what? what? I, so I'm, I'm thinking it's like a Casio. I start inspecting it and I see ROL. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm like, this is fake, right? Like, he bought this from some website for a hundred dollars, and it's a mock Rolex. And he's like, "No, no, no, it's it's real." So I asked his girlfriend, "I'm like, what, what the fuck is the bit here? Like, does he do this? Like, what what's going on?" She's like, "I have no idea. I didn't even really know he was going to do that." Wow. And he's like, "Well, o- open up the look at the back. Look at the back." And he like opens up the clasp. He's like, "That's the serial number right there." I'm like, "Okay, cool." And I like try to give it back to him. He's like, "No, no, no, you keep it." And I try to give it back again. He's like, no, 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 you keep it. What the fuck? Yeah, that's, so then he's just like, all right, man, my Uber's here. Like, it was really nice to meet you. Thank you, thank you so much for the show. And he just walks out. I'm standing there holding the watch. Like, what the fuck do I do with this? So he moves some feet away. And we're all kind of just thinking, like, what the hell? And I'm holding the watch. I'm like, this feels so weird. And then my tour manager he takes it out of my hand. He's like, you know what? Fuck this. And he's like from Philly. He's super aggressive. So he goes outside and he approaches the dude. He's like, what the fuck is going on with this, man? You t- take it back. Is there a fucking curse? Like, we don't want it. Like, just curse? Yeah, he's like, just keep it. He's like, whatever dead uncle gave you this, we don't want it. Just take it back. The guy's like, no, no, no. Like, it's fine. Like, seriously, just 
keep it, give it to the bartender at the club. Like it's whatever. And, and then I, I kind of walk outside cause it's seeming like it's getting aggressive. Yeah. So, you know, I don't want the guy to have like a negative experience. So I like, I walk up and I'm like, Hey, hey, hey. and then the last thing I see is my tour manager being like, well, you made it fucking weird. <laughs> <laughs> He's not wrong. Yeah, and then the guy's like, okay, then I'm weird. It's fine, dude. Have a good night. And he just gets in the Uber and he leaves. Was it an Uber black? I had, I don't think so. I don't even. It was See, such I a blur. Paid, I would have been like, okay, is he getting into like a nice Uber? Cause maybe no, because I've, I've seen reach, uh, reach, reach people. I've yes, seen reach people. Yeah, I've seen rich people who just, they drive like Hyundais. Like they, yeah. you know, they're super low key. So for all we know, he's got a ton of money because he only gets Uber X's. He gets Uber pools. Yeah. You know? Damn. Did you look up the, uh, Serial numbers, see what the what it retails for? Well, I, I'm going to take it to a place and like get this serial number like verified. There's like a certain yeah. location inside the band that will confirm if it's real or not. It would be really fun if it was a long, drawn-out, D's nuts bit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where you go yeah, and you get yeah, it yeah. and the, somehow the, yeah, the owner's name was like Richard D's or something. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, God. Uh, there's no serial number, but there is a... Brody Yukin. <laughs> Do you know anything about that? What is bro? Come on, give it to me. What is Brody Yukin? Brody Yukin suck this dick. Oh, yeah. Brody yeah. Yukin lick these nuts. Yeah. Brody Yukin put these balls in your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. There really is no end to the possibilities. Mm -hmm. You can mix and match. Yeah. Brody yeah. Yukin get this love and affection. That's what I'd prefer. Yeah. Love and affection rocks, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just some LNA? Yeah. <laughs> we all, who doesn't love love and affection? Um, Anyway, I like it. It's match. You're matching your whole outfit. Oh it's yeah, really, you know, uh, I had to, I had to, had to go green. Are you remember on fleek because that's what you be doing, <laughs> Ben. <laughs> ben, I told you I'm trying to do Cody justice here. <laughs> 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 uh, Cody famously on fleek, <laughs> as am I. You know, I don't remember the last time I even washed these pants. That's awesome, man. They smell like meat sweat. Probably. I mean, I have swept my stairs out front, and every time I sweep, uh, sweep, because I get a lot of dust coming from my apartment complex. Doesn't have like grass or rocks. It just has fucking dirt, Damn. and the dirt will blow up all over my steps. And after like a couple months, I gotta go out and sweep the steps. I start at the top, and by the time I get to the bottom, it's just caked in dirt, and I'm yep. getting it all over my pants. And these are the ones I usually wear when I do it. And I'm sweating by the time I get down there. I feel like my neighbors all think I'm psycho because I usually have a bandana tied around my head to keep the sweat from getting in my eyes. Do you sweat I'm just that bad? <laughs> sweating dirt or sweeping dirt. No, I don't actually. Like I don't wear deodorant because I don't need it. But, but you do need the. I need that. But like you know, shit. if I'm if I'm uh, exerting myself like that, because it does. <laughs> do you do that when you eat pussy too? Uh, wear a headband. Yeah. <laughs> nah, man, you just gotta let the sweat flow <laughs> all right that's different or something <laughs> right guys hey fellas leave a comment leave a comment if you also don't wear a bandana when you go down on your lady so that's what i do i do it i do it uh like harley biker style yeah like i tie and like i put the flap you know <laughs> oh yeah yeah just to make sure i'm maximum coverage my brother sam is big into bandanas he owns a ton of them and yeah. always wears them like that that style <laughs> like a pirate yeah, I want to say Aunt Jemima style. Did she wear a bandana? No, she did not. But what did she look like? She had hair. She didn't have like a bandana on. No, no? You're, are you thinking or a of bonnet the... or something? You thinking of the fucking <clears throat> war me? Oh, I'm thinking of the. Uh, yeah. Oh, she did. She did have a bonnet. No, no, not not, not on the logo. No, she didn't. But maybe you're thinking of that very niche image. Yeah, the very old. Wow, wow. What was slave in a box? Oh, that's a book. Huh. Interesting. <laughs> well, anyway. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh. Yeah, no, how do you pivot out of that one? Oh, uh, we can. You, you know. <laughs> you ever been to Boston? I have. I went Speaking there. Speaking of racism, you ever been to Boston? 1998. Yeah. <laughs> My family went on a summer vacation trip to Boston, New York, and D.C., and it was in August. Just the worst time to be on the East Coast. Wow. Miserable, yeah. but fun. Memorable. Do you remember what you did there? In Boston, it was the last, we went to New York first, then D.C., then Boston, and we were just so spent by then. We just spent most of the time in the air-conditioned Marriott room where we were. Nice. Just did fuck all. Nice. It was nice. 
It was yeah. 10 or something. 10 or 11. Yeah, because it was 98. I was born in 87. <laughs> really aging myself here. Uh, Jeez, that's so Louise. cool you're good at math. I'm 16. I'm not good at math yet. Dude, I suck at math, though. I'm yeah. good at getting percentages, like calculating the tip. It's easy. You just move the decimal over one place to get 10%, and then you double it to get 20%. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I get that. But like basic addition and subtraction, cannot. <laughs> it sucks. Yeah. Uh, By the who needs it? You got a calculator. Uh, Everybody's got one. You don't have one on your watch, though. That no, I don't. Sucks. No. I have that on my phone. Did you see the, the, there was a Vietnam veteran on like some uh, antiques roadshow who had a pristine, well, not quite pristine, but like he had all the original packaging and receipt and stuff for a Rolex that he bought in Vietnam. Wow. It, it, the, the guy estimated it was worth like up to $700,000. <laughs> and the guy just went, oh. wow. Yeah. <laughs> then they shot him right there and took it from him. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been tight if they did that. Guy comes out of the vintage trumpet. Burr, burr, burr. Burr, burr, burr. Oh, like the uh, little military shit when someone's dead. Tappies or whatever that's called. Yeah. What is that song called? Oh, yeah, there he is. He's one of those Vietnam vets who made well, it damn. his whole he, idea. He's got the pussy eating headband. Yeah, he does. Well, this is the headband I wear when I go down on my wife. <laughs> She's dead now. <laughs> She's so dead, but I wear it as a memory. Yes. Damn, look at all that, though. Huh. Good yeah. for him. Hey, what's his reaction? Can we see it? Or is it he, just, be he really just says like, wow. Is extremely, <laughs> is extremely rare. Right a Wait. watch like this at auction is worth about $400,000. Oh. Oh. Huh. You okay? Oh. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Damn, Don't fall. You, bro. I'm not done yet. I wish. I said a watch beer? like yours. Because of the condition of it. Basically, it's a new old stock watch. No wear on it. The original foil sticker on the back of it. And the fact that we have all this complete documentation on, here also. Here. Maybe one of the very few in the whole world that still was never worn. Your watch at auction today, five hundred to $700,000. Falls down again. Oh, you're good. <laughs> no, I'm... Yo, that, but, <laughs> that guy. Good for him. That subtle sensor, just the one frame black bar. I I just wanted him to say like, you know, I never thought I'd get anything for killing all those Viet Cong, yeah, but yeah. here we are. Yeah. Like, <laughs> wow, who would have thought? <laughs> all I got was this enduring lifetime of trauma. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> now I've got money to blow in Las Vegas. Yeah. Uh, and then I, he goes and sells it, and he brings it to, like, a local Vietnamese community. And he's like, I'm sorry. That would be nice. Yeah. That would be a nice redemptive arc for mm -hmm. this man. <laughs> I'm sorry for... Sorry about maybe killing your uncle or yeah. something. <laughs> sorry for being a bad person. Your grandfather. I was... You know, it, it wasn't my fault. Yeah. I was just... They were shooting at me. And, you know, <laughs> gotta shoot back, it I guess. It was my fault. Listen, war is bad unless you're at war with me. In yeah. which case, I'm going to roll over and you're going to win. Yeah, that is true. We, we know that much. So that... <laughs> yeah, you're, we definitely know you're going to roll over. You're going to get uh, on all fours. You're going to get on your back. Hey, man. You know. Fucking souls, souls high. Life is full of uh, interesting twists and turns. And you can't, you can't navigate those unless you get on your back from time to time. That's true. Hey, everyone. We want to take a quick break to thank another sponsor of today's episode, DoorDash. You want Chinese. They want pizza. And someone is craving Froyo. There's something for everyone on DoorDash. DoorDash connects you with the restaurants you love right now, right to your door. And now you can get grocery essentials you need with DoorDash, too. You can get drinks, snacks, and other household items delivered in under an hour. Wow. That's longer than you nut. Ordering is easy. Open the DoorDash app, choose what you want from where you want, and your items will be left safely outside your door with the contactless delivery drop-off setting. With over 300,000 partners in the U.S., Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia, you can support your neighborhood go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Popeye's, Chipotle, and the Cheesecake Factory. And for a limited time, if you're dodging taxes in Puerto Rico uh, or you're just a listener... 
uh, of our podcast, you can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on your first order of $15 or more. When you download the DoorDash app and you enter the code TINY, that's 25% off up to a $10 value and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter the code TINY. Don't forget, that's code TINY for 25% off your first order with DoorDash. Subject to change, terms apply. Dude, I, I asked if you've ever been to Boston because we... um. We saw like the replica like tea party boat. Ooh. That kind of that like fucked me up slightly. Like damn, a significant piece of America like happened here. Yeah. Do you ever do you give a shit about history? Of course. Yeah. It was one of those moments where I came out of my LA bubble and I was like, damn, that's some shit from our textbook. Like it had like a moment with the boat. Yeah. Yeah. That's uh was it a big boat? Yeah. It had like a jet ski on it. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm just looking at a yacht. <laughs> Damn, it was I, called the Tea yeah, Party. Yeah. Can't believe the Tea Party who was here, man. Yeah, no, it was, it was. Uh, I don't know. It. I, I just came away from Boston feeling so weird. It because I'll forever remember it as the city where I got like pretty much dunked on by like some rich kid. Yeah, take the watch. Yeah, it's not a big deal. Yeah, fuck face. Yeah. Does Rolex do like more affordable watches now these days? Is it still like is there still a high barrier to entry? I really don't know. Well, with inflation, no. Okay. Cuz like, much like Mercedes has like the fucking peasant ass C class, you know, yeah. or whatever the cheap civilian class. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what it stands for. <laughs> like the C100. Yeah. Buddy, just get a nice Hyundai. Yeah. Honestly. That's yeah. what I would do. I love that too like with BMW. Oh, the, the like one, 100 yeah, the, class? Yeah, the 135s. Oh, God. It's like, yeah, so it's got a steering wheel. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> power doors. <Yeah. laughs> or, or windows, I yeah. mean. <laughs> yeah, so like you're going to power as you hit the crank on it. I'd prefer a crank, honestly. Yeah. My dad's old Volvo 240 had a hand crank. Uh, In the ceiling? Ceiling, uh, roof, fucking sunroof. Okay. <sighs> Yeah, I just couldn't remember what the roof of the car was called. I wanted to call it the ceiling, which it technically kind of still is. It's the ceiling. Yeah. A ceiling is just whatever you put above your head, my man. That's true. Come on, dude. Uh, (laughs) A ceiling is where you make it. You get under that couch, baby, that's a ceiling. It's true. In and of itself. (laughs) Damn, we've been going for 99 minutes? Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, it's never going to end. I almost took an edible before this, and I'm so glad that I didn't. I got really stoned last night. You did? Yeah. I, we should have gotten high. I'd be down to do that one time. Yeah. But I don't think that all of us should be. I think one or two, like for eight ball, I think one or two should be. And that's Stone it. sober. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you should be on acid again. I'm down to do that. <laughs> I, it's, it's, I have no issue with that. <laughs> Dude, uh, so when I was leaving Boston, my flight got canceled, and it's something I just been. Did seeing. it say something? Did it say something on Twitter or something? What your flight? <laughs> did your flight say something on Twitter that it shouldn't have? Sorry. <laughs> that was good. I'm sorry, dude. Yeah. Go on. It got canceled. Yeah my my flight said the f slur on Twitter. Ooh. During Pride Month, double no. Oh God, that's a no no. There was a whole segment on it on TV. Yeah. This 747 canceled <laughs> after its AI went rogue and tweeted the uh, F slur. Uh, I would love to see what an airplane AI would tweet. They're just interviewing the dials. It's just yeah. going crazy. It's, it's just saying Super it homophobic. Yeah. <laughs> FAA? More like FAA. <laughs> it's like, hey, oh, hey, hey, hey. Enough. Ah, oh, Babu! Oh my God! <laughs> Reading out flight codes. F A. Mm, mm. If, if well, no, go on. No, no, no. You can imagine. No, well, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> so, so your flight got canceled. Yeah, it got canceled. Yeah. So, um, well, hopefully, you know, it'll an apology with tears video, and it'll be back on tour. Yeah. yeah. No, it got canceled, and I haven't seen that happen a lot. Did you you saw the video of the dude getting? The, that United employee getting his shit rocked? I think. I you must have. It was like a few weeks ago. On the plane? No, no, no. It was out. At the gate? Yeah, it was at, 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 at the check-in, I guess. You know, where you where your, where your backdrop yes. is. Yeah. He pushed the guy first. Yeah. And then the guy fought back. Yeah. Good for the guy. You should do that. So. Uh, Defend yourself. I've like. <laughs> 
so I get back to the airport and like it's cool, but I've I'm bringing this up because Boston pushed me to like two moments where I kind of understood why people become Karens. Like sure. I almost had you ever had a Karen moment? I've never had I've never had that. I have, but I contain it. Yeah, the I almost like I had one where I almost didn't. Like uh on this trip? Yeah. I was eating at some restaurant and we brought Ollie and they're kind of being shitty about us just having him we're like sitting outside like on a sidewalk and they're like is he a service dog Mm." or no no no. their scam is they ask if it's an emotional support animal because most people probably say yes and then they go yeah well technically he can't be in the restaurant and i'm like he's not in the restaurant we are outside and they were just being dicks about it Hmm. and uh (laughs) i've I almost like wanted to snap and be like, well, what if I told you he's a service dog? Legally, you can't ask me if he is. So then what? I've never felt that. Like the want to like get in a fucking regular person's face. Yeah. You know, regular person. What a shitty thing to say. It's a reg- it's just a, an innocent person's face. Yeah, but then in this case, they weren't really innocent. Yeah. Or like, like I've never wanted to yell at an employee like that. Sure. It was crazy. And I had to like, it took everything in my body to just like not, do it and again in the airport i would fucking snap but i didn't um but yeah uh it was weird i i just you like i never felt that i never felt a karenism like have you ever acted on one i have never acted on one but the only one that comes to mind is a really piss poor example i was at a really busy coffee shop i ordered a very basic just like drip coffee <laughs> with go. some milk that's it let's go and the, the th- you know the guy's not doing he doesn't have to do anything except for turn around pour it in the cup and give it to me yeah it was like six bucks the tip screen comes on mocking me and I'm like, all right, you know what? Fine. I'm going to tip like three bucks just because I was in a good mood. And I'm like, yeah, it's really busy. They're working hard. Three dollars. And he even says like, wow, thank you. And then I stand aside and I stood there like a chump for about 15 minutes <laughs> right in front of him as other people are making their orders <laughs> and subsequently receiving their orders yeah. and I started to feel insane. Yeah. I'm like, this guy, like, I, I, I'm I, not just another face because I went out of my way to, like, over tip <laughs> and for which he thanked me and he's looking, he's got to see me and yet he's just like... It is nothing. So after the rush died down, I just kind of was so like, huh, fuck. <laughs> I walked up and I just said... Uh, hey, I ordered a uh, drip coffee, and he goes, oh, God, yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to be like, yeah, fuck you, but please. And also, and, and I immediately <laughs> just, went, as soon as he said I'm sorry, I was like, ew, no, it's yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry for asking, and I should actually just go <laughs> I didn't hide. want the coffee anyway. Yeah, yeah I didn't I didn't <laughs> need it, but, but yeah, uh, I'm sure I'll think of something as soon as I get in my car and go, oh, that would have been such a fucking good story. Yeah. Fuck. Yeah. I asked because like it came out a little bit. Like I eased it out. Like <laughs> this dude goes, this is an emotional support animal. He gives me the whole speech. He's like, you can tie him up over there, like three feet away. He's like, but he can't be in the restaurant. And I looked at the pole and I looked at him and I went, all right. <laughs> and that's it. And then we just like kind of, he was like, okay. And I just shook my head and I just kept eating. Good. <laughs> just held, Good for you. It just held Ollie there. And then I was waiting for it. I was waiting for him to come back out, and he kept making eye contact with me because he's delivering more food. Yeah. And I had it cocked and ready. If he came back and was like, I really need you, I was going to just be like, you mind grabbing me a bunch of to-go boxes then so I can get all this to leave? Yeah. And then just eat it slowly and just fucking just be as petty as possible. Hey, everyone. We're going to take another quick break to thank another sponsor of this episode, uh, HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. You're going away this summer? You can update your delivery address and enjoy HelloFresh at your vacation destination with just a click. The plans are flexible, so they work with your uh, changing schedule. (laughs) Because, you know, you're just so out and about. You're so busy. 
Yeah, right, you fucking nerd. Foolproof step-by-step recipes mean a joyful cooking experience and a stress-free summer. Plus, HelloFresh cuts back on time spent in the kitchen with meals ready in about 30 minutes or less. You can discover seasonal summer recipes like cucumber salad stuffed pita pockets. Mmm. Or chicken sausage stuffed peppers. Yummy. Or Tuscan spiced shrimp. And so much more. (laughs) <laughs> HelloFresh saves me a bunch of time and money because it's super fast and easy. And I especially love the chicken sausage stuffed peppers. I'm a spicy boy. Go to HelloFresh.com slash TinyMeat16 and use the code TinyMeat16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. That's HelloFresh.com slash TinyMeat16 and use code TinyMeat16 for up to 16 free meals and three free gifts. HelloFresh. America's number one meal kit. Now, I did, just speaking of you sitting there waiting, you you had your whole thing planned. Yeah. You were ready to go. Yeah. This is a bit of a different take or story, but <laughs> five, six years ago, I'm in You New- shot a restaurant worker. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> I, was, uh, I was in New York, dead of summer, super hot. I'm on, uh, I can't remember, the Jay-Z a uh, train which is outside the Jay Z train, yeah, the JMZ. The, <laughs> no, no. Oh my god, I thought you were referring to a train that Jay Z like mentioned in a song. That'd be cool. And I, I actually have wondered aloud, like, hey, did he name himself after the train? Because it says Jay Z, and he's from Brooklyn, and it goes through Brooklyn. It's a sensible question. Okay, fair. So, uh, I'm standing out there waiting with my girlfriend at the time. And I look over and I see this guy kind of cracked out, tweaked out looking. Yeah. And he's scoping out these two women like in a really gross way who are right next to him. And then he kind of digs through the trash. And I just was like keeping my eye on him because I'm like, this guy looks like he's a tweaker. Yeah. And then he looked up from the trash and saw me looking at him. And he comes over and he just goes, hey, do I know you? And I just thought, you know, my adrenaline immediately is like... (laughs) Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I'm just being friendly. I'm like, no, I don't think so. And he goes, because you're looking at me like you know me. Oh. And then my girlfriend is a native New Yorker. She immediately is like, okay, no, we're not doing this. So she comes over and goes, no, we're not. And then he interrupts her and goes, shut the fuck up, bitch. And I just I just thought, oh, no. <laughs> fuck. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> Damn it. And I just kind of like said, you can't talk to her like that. <laughs> Something like that. All right. And I just Strong. I just thought, okay, I've got to, okay, I guess I have to like put my body between them. And as I said that, and then he like, he grabbed me by the collar of my shirt like this. And he said like, what are you going to do about it? Or something like that. <laughs> I just kind of, <laughs> I just said like, you know, get your hand me something <laughs> i don't remember but my girlfriend thank god just said like we're leaving walk away and i didn't think that that was possible my flight my fight flight or sh- you know shit yourself was getting the poop ready yeah and he goes, she just pulls me away and we walked away and for the rest of the day yeah whenever i had a spare minute whenever i went to the bathroom i was googling like it, it the autocomplete basically already answers what to do when someone grabs your shirt <laughs> and all the like self de- defense videos the first thing that they walk you through is let's say someone grabs you by the shirt <laughs> i'm just like fuck why couldn't i have seen any of these videos beforehand what, what they say to do it, they say all sorts of things there are literally like two dozen things you can do yeah. you can like grab their hand and just choke them you yeah. can like take their arm down and for the rest of the day i'm just fantasizing about it yeah i'm fantasizing about what i could have done that would have made me the hero of the subway platform what i would do if i saw the guy again i'm thinking like oh if if i see this gentleman again it is game over it is game over because i would see him and be like hey grab my shirt come here (laughs) grab my shirt no you with your left hand (laughs) grab it and i'd i'd be ready to take him down of course and I, you know, he's probably dead or in prison, but you know, if he's not, I, I, ha- buddy, I hope you're doing well out there. Fuck face. Um, 
Nice. Yeah, look at me now. <laughs> Go, I dare you to come grab my shirt again. <laughs> but yeah, so that was my one moment where I I now have something prepared. <laughs> anyway, so what have we got, man? Uh, man. No, this is, no, this is way better. This is way better. You getting grabbed by a homeless drug addict going, let me go. <laughs> it's like, as I started to say it, I could feel like my voice cracking as if I were about to cry, but I'm like, but I'm not about to cry. Stop sounding like you're going to cry. When he says, shut the fuck up, bitch, and his head was turned that way, you should have just you should have just one-twoed him right there. Yeah, I And know. then dra- and drug him across and threw him on the train tracks and been like, that's what you get for messing with the bourgeoisie. <sighs> or I should have just screamed. Yeah. Or pulled a Bobby Hill. That's my purse. I don't know you. And oh. kicked him in the ball. Ah, nice. You remember yeah. that episode of King of the Hill? No. Ah, oh, well, yeah. anyway. <laughs> Bobby does self-defense classes, but at the at the encouragement of Hank, he does self-defense classes. But what Hank doesn't know is that he's gone to a women's self-defense class <laughs> where they pretty much only teach you one thing, yeah, to that yell, that's my purse, I don't know you, and then <laughs> kick him in the ball. I, I, I was watching. Uh, we were, Alina and I restarted King of the Hill recently. The only episode that's like coming to mind, which is similar, is... Um, Luann and, uh, oh, God damn it, what's Hank's wife's name? Uh, Peggy. Yeah, Luann and Peggy are doing this, like, workout DVD in the living room. And fucking, and Bobby's, like, he's joining them. And Hank comes in the room, he's like, Bobby, what the hell are you doing? And he's like, uh, <laughs> he, like, snatches him up. And then he's like, don't, don't do that. Like, basically calling him, like, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Gay. And then... <laughs> Luann's like, oh, Uncle Hank, it's it's just jazzercising or something like that. And he's like, or no, Bobby Bobby's like clarifies what the DVD is. And Hank's just like, don't talk like that. Don't say <laughs> words like that. It's just so Don't funny. say jazzercise? Yeah, like yeah. it's just like, <laughs> it was so good. It's really a great show. Yeah. I remember hating when it would come on after the Simpsons at the six o'clock the six o'clock Simpsons hour. Simpsons at six. Yeah. King of the Hill at six thirty. And I thought, fuck, man. But I always enjoyed it. I had my uh my TV consumption was like um it was very secretive. I had to get it in before my parents got home. As soon as they got home, I had to shut that shit off. Because you had no joy and pleasure in your home? I was not allowed now. Because your parents weren't happy, right? Um, uh, I mean, yeah. I they had a kid, like, why would they be? Yeah, but you I'm were joking. probably such a great kid. Uh nah. Well, you were clearly very malleable and easy to boss around. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, I had to shut off the TV and then pretend to do addition for six uh, hours. And look like at you now. Yeah. You could have actually been doing it instead of pretending. Yeah. Yeah, just getting screamed at because I can't do fucking seven plus eight on command. It's 15. Yeah. That was that. Did you ever get that? Like your parents like get in your face about homework? No. But they, and, you know, I got spanked a good quite impression. a bit. <laughs> I, I got, I did get, I had my share of ass whippings. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That made you a man? No, it made me flawed <laughs> yeah. and vulnerable. Yeah. When <laughs> so a man. Like, Shut the fuck up, bitch. What are you going to do? You're like, oh. you turned around and pulled your pants down. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I remember the biggest ass whooping I got. I decided to play hide and seek with my mom without telling her Uh, at uh, JCPenney. Oh, yeah. And good, dude. The whole like mall security was looking for me. (laughs) And I finally knew to give up, to give it up when they called, they paged me on the intercom. They're like, Ben, if you're, if you're like here or whatever, your mom is at so. And I came out and I just remember thinking, why is my mom crying hysterically? Because she thought I was lost. And when I went home, I was doubly confused why my dad spanked the hell out of me. Yeah. Because it's like, well, shouldn't you guys be happy I'm not lost? Yeah. But it was like, no, you you shouldn't do things like that. I mean, it's like, I get that. I'm sure as a kid, you're thinking like, I get that I won. You guys aren't very good at hide and seek. But like, this is not the way to behave. This isn't the way to treat a winner. Yeah. <laughs> You're teaching you like that? the wrong things here. Yeah. yeah. I do remember the best lesson I learned, which is that you can't always win when for the first and only time in my little league career, 
we made it to the championship game and then Fuck lost. Yeah. Uh, and we had like we had like famously at the time um, we had like the worst team in the league that everybody thought was going to lose, and we made it all the way, and then we lost. Damn. Yeah. Damn. There's a there was a picture of my dad holding the kid who lost the game, who happened to be severely autistic. This kid named Kenny right. hit the final, had the final out, and uh, he started crying. And my dad like picked him up and was like, ah, and then snap picture, and it's like on the LA Times. I think it's on the website somewhere. And then your but, dad took you home and then whooped your ass and said, "Why couldn't you win the game, Ben?" Close. <laughs> it was the first time I ever cried. After, you know, I didn't care. I knew sports was just, you know, you yeah. win some, you lose some. But it was the first time I cried after a game. And my mom, I remember getting in the car going, where do you want to go, honey? And I was like, <laughs> in my head, I'm like, fuck, Taco Bell or McDonald's? <laughs> fuck. I chose Taco Bell. Damn. Chicken quesadilla with a side of nacho cheese sauce. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, those were the days, dude. That was before they charged you for the extra nacho cheese sauce on the side. They do do that. They do it now. Yeah, it's like a, it's like thirty eight cents or something. I would expect it to be even more. Yeah, fifty cents perhaps. I don't know. Maybe this is pre inflation. <sighs> we're just we're literally living in the Great Depression right now, so it's hard to remember. You know the old yeah. days. Are you freaked I, out about the economy at all? I am in the sense that <clears throat> unemployment is really low, but you had a bunch, and we're going to talk about this on on Trillionaire Mindset. Yeah, that's um, his podcast on Thursday. But I'm freaked out in the sense that a bunch of tech companies like overhired because of the surge in demand over the last couple of years. Like I just read today that in 2021, Amazon had 960 thousand employees, but as of March, they have 1.6 million. That's crazy. And they're gonna have to lay off yeah. some of these people because they just put out headlines that they're. Um, like backtracking on a bunch of warehouse space that they Ooh. went out to leave. So now they're like subletting it to whoever, to whoever, and um, like canceling some contracts. So like naturally, what comes next is people getting laid off. They just did a stock split, didn't they? They did. It actually went into effect. Uh, well, as of this recording yesterday. What? Uh, and then Google's is coming up. Yeah. What like I always? What's the point of a stock split to just get more money? It makes it more appealing for the everyday investor because yeah. before the stock was trading at like you know twenty four hundred bucks, but now it's at like one twenty. So Got it. It's more appealing. Got it. And it creates more volume, more shares out there, so there's more liquidity with which to yeah buy and sell to one another. Nice. I don't know. It all sucks. The system's broken, man. The system is broken. Yeah. The system is broke. Oh, shit. Sorry. Hey, guys, we want to take a quick break to thank a sponsor of today's episode, BetterHelp. Life can be overwhelming and many people are burned out without even knowing it. Symptoms can include lack of motivation, feeling helpless or trapped, detachment, fatigue, and more. We associate burnout with work, but that's not the only cause. Um, any of our roles in life can lead to us feeling burned out. And BetterHelp Online Therapy wants to remind you to prioritize yourself. Talking with someone can help you figure out what's causing you stress in your life. A lot of you know I go to therapy. Uh, Cody goes to therapy, and it can be something that's very beneficial for yourself, and maybe BetterHelp can be the way um, you achieve that. Uh, BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to go see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Uh, it's very affordable, much more than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. And right now, TMG listeners can get 10% off their first month at BetterHelp.com slash TMG. That's better, H-E-L-P dot com slash TMG. So I keep seeing flights get, getting canceled and... You know, they don't ever give you reasons. Yeah. But the funniest thing is like, you'll be at the gate and you're like, you'll catch a rumor of it. It'll be like some pissed off guy. He'll be like, yeah, one of the fucking attendants didn't show up. So the flight is just not, you know, whatever. So I think I, I keep wondering, I mean, it's probably true, but uh, I feel like the airline industry has like an employment issue. Like, I feel like they can't. I've heard that too. Field enough people. But that video, that dude getting like knocked out by the guy at the mm -hmm. gate. Like I keep feeling like I'm seeing more and more of that like every time I go to the airport. And I don't know if it's because I'm traveling more, but it feels so aggressive. Like any time I go to check into a flight, there is guaranteed one person like about to shoot the place up. who's like, I, I fucking, I'm trying to go to Lisbon and you guys fucked me. Like they're just losing it. Yeah. Every time I go in there, I just see so many people like just asleep with their luggage like at the gate, you know? And then they'll kind of like lumber over as I'm checking in. They're like, 
are there any flights? Like, no, sorry, you just have to keep waiting. People feel more entitled than ever before. And they feel owed something by corporations. Yeah. And the representative of that corporation is a is a person who's just like you standing behind a desk earning an hourly wage oh, that dude. is not competitive at all. And people just tend to lose their humanity in moments like that where yeah. the Karen rage starts to bubble up. Yeah. And it's unfortunate. And it's yeah. uh it's a degradation of society that I wish wouldn't happen. We all need we all could do more to check ourselves before we wreck ourselves. Wow. And you know, social media wow. and our phones and the economy of everything right now, uh -huh. whenever you need it, contributes to that. Yeah. And it sucks. Well, that's that's a great point. It you could tell as well like how all the people who work at the desk, like the bag check, mm -hmm. they have like acclimatized themselves to being so robotic in their mannerisms because they don't want to do anything. It feels like they don't want to do anything to just, you know, shake the situation up. It's either that or they're so cagey. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes I'll go, I'm like, hey, how are you? They're like, where are you flying? <laughs> just yeah. so angry. And I notice it with flight attendants too. Like they're just, you could tell it's getting worn down. You know, I feel like if I even emote the wrong way, mm -hmm. like they just be liable to take that fucking little thing of like peanuts and just shove it in my face. Yeah, so, here you go, fucker. Yeah, yeah, like you those? Fuck? yeah. Yeah, yeah the, it definitely goes both ways where those people are, that's one thing that people don't consider either is that you're mad at them and you might be the 20th person, person that they've dealt with yeah. this week alone who's been a complete sourpuss mm -hmm. asshole. Mm -hmm. And- they're people too. They got their breaking points. Yeah. You better be careful. They might let a little uh, spit make it into your water. Yeah. Yeah. Your can of Sprite. Yeah. A little ball sweat onto the salmon. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. You reach in there, right down there, and. A little puss glue. <laughs> puss glue? <laughs> Just a little, you know, a little snail trail. Jeez. Just a little. That makes its way into your cereal. Who knows? Cereal on an airplane? I don't know. I, I couldn't think of what you get served on an airplane fast enough. Crackers. Crackers, yeah. peanuts. Yeah. American Airlines has a pretty good uh, snack option in the economy class. They got a cheese and cracker plate. It's exceptional. <laughs> really, it's good. I'll remember that next time I fly economy. If you... F <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've seen my watch, but things are different now. Uh -huh, Rolex, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I can't even really brag about this. Why not? I, like, I'm somebody's son. In, oh, yeah, because it was given to you and yeah, like, purchased? Yeah. It yeah. wasn't earned. It was like, I don't even know what you'd call it. Won? Awarded? Yeah, I don't I don't know. Gifted, maybe? Yeah. It's like, yeah, man, that 9-11 joke was so good. Here's a very nice watch. Damn. What was the 9-11 joke? Uh, you got to see Noel live to get it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Hartford, Connecticut. I'll be there. Come see me. Yeah. What are you traveling? Are you using miles? Are you racking them up? You better be, or I'm going to be pissed. Uh -huh. Oh, I'm using my debit card. <laughs> no, I'm using my private jet. <laughs> <laughs> um, nah, it's it doesn't really add up because I'm using different airlines like every single time. Yeah. So it's not as it's not as like a a strong of a, an amalgamation of. But miles what as you are you using? Like an American Express card? I am not. Chase Sapphire card? I am not. Dude, what are you using? Um, a bank given credit card. Do you get any kind of points or anything for that? I don't know. Buddy, why? <laughs> I, I'm not even I'm not even like why are you doing that? Everything's fine. I mean it, it is, but you could be It's okay. <clears throat> yeah, it is. It's fine. I don't know. I have my, my relationship with things is like things are good and uh, it is it is a more money, more problems kind of situation where more points, more headaches. Like I've got so many points that it's paralyzing when I go to book a flight. Nice. I'm like, okay, <sighs> first I have to like look at all the different awards charts and like punch in my uh, yeah. origin and destination and then I tinker with the dates and then I tinker with, well, maybe if I fly into Newark instead of uh, it's all right. to save... 10,000 points, whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, it's it's okay. It's still sweet, though, once you book it and you're just like, damn, I only spent 50 bucks on this shit? Yeah. Mm. It's mm. all right. I like it. I, I, I'm trying to manage my relationship with money. Yeah? I don't want too much. It, I think it makes you fucking weird. 
It's true. And I stand by that. And just, you got to, just got to try to hit a limit and then just be there and then try to preserve normal. I agree with that. You just got to live your life. It's nice to not have to worry about things that everybody else necessarily has to worry about. Yeah. And uh, treat yourself and those you love. Yeah. Sock a little bit away for a rainy day. Yeah. That's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. You know, get some new underwear. Because then you're giving Rolexes to people as a gift. and Yeah, like that guy. And that's just a whole other, I, you know, I don't want I wonder if there. he's out there just going, fuck. Why did I do that? I, I he 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 messaged me the next day and said, he said, "Hey man, thanks again for the show. So, you know, sorry if that was uncomfortable, kind of thing." Huh. So shout out to you, bro. What's his name? Uh, I'm not gonna. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Why, why do that? It's fine. I think um, it's funnier to talk about y- your perfect male physique. Do you, well, I mean, you tweeted that this morning. Are you asking me first what I think it is? No. No. You hadn't seen it. Okay. (laughs) You may not like it, but this is how all my It's the golden ratio, man. Oh, man. Who is that guy? Um, uh, God. He does have quite the, uh, the bod on him. Yeah. He's got the, um, in honor of Pride Month, he definitely has a bear body. <laughs> he does. So what he you're go- saying is bears were were like designed in the Bible, like kinda. Look at those forearms, man. Those things are oh, juicy. Dude. Yeah, I wish. He's got a tush. He's got a, a caboose going there, mm-hmm. and an equally an equal but opposite uh, belly. Yeah, it was funny. I put this on my Instagram story, and someone responded. Dude, I just got this tattooed on my body. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, oh, the, the fucking uh, Fibonacci sequence. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ever seen those like trading uh, systems that are based on the Fibonacci yes, sequence? Yes, I never know because they're you can start them and and set them from any point basically. So yeah. I'm like, okay, what? Where do I? Yeah, what's the? Where do you want me to start it? And like, there is some legitimacy ugh, legitimacy to them. Yeah, but yeah. I don't know. Anyway, the perfect aesthetic male. Mm. For me, it's Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, circa Mr. Olympia. Yeah, kind of. That let's, chest, man. That guy just let's, was. Let's pull that up. His hammerhead looking chest. Yeah, he and he just had the face to go with it. Like him in Terminator. I'm sure James Cameron, when he cast him as Terminator, was just in awe of how perfect he was for that role. The accent, everything was so perfectly robotic. It was great. Yeah, every day I'm reminded I lost the genetic lottery. Ugh, it's me awesome. too, buddy. Yeah, you me and me both. Wait, no, no, no. Go, go to that one that's black and white where his fucking, his shit looks like a like a cobra neck. Where no, is no, that? No. Up, up, that one. That one. Right there? He straight up yeah, looks like yeah. a cobra head. For the audio listener, I just, I wish you could see it, but it's Arnold Schwarzenegger in black and white, and he's just, oh, man. No, his his, his chest and back looks like a cobra head, and then- Oh, yeah, it does. His arms- uh, His lats look like are your fair. legs. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> oh Jesus! He, you know, he is an he is an American treasure. Yeah. And when he dies, I'm legitimately gonna be heartbroken. It's it's him. Left we'll something bad to tell you. What? No. Oh, he's his clock's a ticking. <laughs> no, this is just like you just died right now. <laughs> oh, that'd be so terrible. No, that's not him. Uh, Stevie Wonder. Yeah, thank you. Him, Stevie Wonder. I can't think of who else I love that I would be devastated by if they died. Um, my family? Yeah, my family is probably. No, nah, he's been through that. It's fine. Yeah, I've been he through that. Handle. Wait, what was the uh, what was next on the list? There was something right getting cucked for the World Series. The yeah. fuck is it? Oh yeah, dude, you want? Did you send that? Speaking of heartbreak. Uh huh. What? Just the World Series. Just World Series? just wait. Just wait. Oh, dude, dude. Oh, oh, dude. I think I know where this is probably going to go. Oh, so, this is brutal. Okay, so this is a TikTok. Let's see. Yeah, we're watching a TikTok, and it's like one of those on man on the street interviews. Um, and just all you have to do is listen. If the Yankees were going to win a World Series, but you had to give each other a hall pass, would you do it? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay, why who, who does she have to? Who does she have she to? You can pick anyone who you want. Who would you pick? Anyone in the world? Anyone? My ex-boyfriend. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! <laughs> Who would you oh. pick? Uh, 
Mm. Boyfriend. You. Oh. Oh. So why the ex-boyfriend? We're gonna fight about this. Why the ex-boyfriend? <laughs> um, He's gone. You can tell. Me. He was a good lover. Oh, okay. Wow. Wow. Holy shit. <sighs> yeah. That poor guy. Yeah. He clearly loves his girlfriend very much, and she's just oblivious. Yeah. And what a golden retriever. Oh, boy. She just said the worst shit ever, and he just looked at her and went, you? <laughs> I love how she capped it off with turning around and being like, he was a good lover. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, it wasn't necessary. Yeah. It totally did not have that, that detail. He had a great hog. Yeah. <laughs> Perfectly shaped. Uh, hello, everyone. We want to take a moment to thank another sponsor of today's episode, Stamps.com. When you're running a small business, every second counts. So why are you still taking time out of your day to go to the post office when you could be using Stamps.com instead? Stamps.com makes mailing and shipping quick, easy, and cost-effective. Stamps.com saves you time, money, and stress. Stamps.com gives you access to all post office and UPS shipping services you need right from your computer. You can get discounts you can't get anywhere else, like up to 30% off USPS shipping rates and up to 86% off on UPS shipping rates. Streamline your shipping process with Stamps.com's easy-to-use software. All you need is your regular computer and printer. No special supplies or equipment. You're up and running in minutes printing official postage for any letter, any package, anywhere you want to send. Plus, Stamps.com seamlessly works with Shopify, Amazon, Etsy, eBay, and more. When we first started TMG, we used Stamps.com to mail our merchandise, and we've continued to use it as our business grows. It's a game changer. So stop wasting time and start saving money when you use Stamps.com to mail and ship. Sign up with promo code TMG for a special offer that includes a four-week trial, plus free postage, and a digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to Stamps.com. Click the microphone at the top of the page and enter the code TMG. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about my favorite TikTok series, which is the summary of movies. Okay. When they, when, have you seen those? No. They're fucking amazing. No. Do you and have I an get example? suckered in. They're perfect. They are perfect. I don't think that those are them, but they're, but I do want to show him the, the guy, those tweets right underneath the, yeah, from Corel B. I got this guy that you're going to fucking lose your mind over. But there is this TikTok trend where I don't even know if it's a trend or so much as it is as it is a tactic to get people to watch because it fucking works. They will take a movie and cut it up into like anywhere from three to seven parts. Yeah. And you got to go into the comments to see the next one. Sure. But they, they summarize movies using the robot guy voice. Oh. And it's like broken English. I don't know why they do it in broken English. Yeah. But like, give me a movie and I'll sum, I'll sum it up for I you. iRobot. iRobot. He was a man. He, I, I don't yeah, know why yeah, robot. Yeah. <laughs> give, me, give me a movie. Uh, give me another movie that I've uh, seen, dude. Okay. Come on. Um, fuck. Uh, the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, I haven't seen them. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Um, I saw the first one recently. All right. Um, the Matrix, maybe? The Mandalorian TV series. Okay. Okay. The Matrix. What would you do for The Matrix? I haven't seen The Mandalorian. <laughs> Disney sucks. Uh, the Matrix, the Matrix, okay, but it's the robot voice will uh, will uh, will be like, there was a woman. She dressed in leather. She in a room. The police come. They try to arrest her. She fight off the police. She go downstairs. Run away. Run away on top of building. She go into phone booth. Mysteriously disappear. Man, <laughs> just you know, the cliff notes. Of have a you movie? seen these? No. Oh, they're so fucking unbelievable. And then, yeah, the rest, of it'll just be, and I'm sitting there going, even if it's a movie that I've seen and I know, I'm like, yeah, sum it up Yeah, for me. Yeah, just make it, yeah. I'll revisit it. And I like the voice. <laughs> he dodged the bullet. He gets shot at. He, he fight and fight. They think he dead, but he not. <laughs> that TikTok voice is the best. They did really do a good job with that. It yeah. sounds really good. Yeah. I'm glad it's not the woman anymore that. Ah, yeah. Let it die. Because <laughs> they're the guys. You don't like women. No, no. It's cause... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, you know the app. The app was much better this way. Women you know? are superior beings all around. They have a higher pain tolerance. They have a higher bullshit tolerance. 
Um, so all the more reason why you should excuse and forgive any kind of explosive public uh, behaviors because you never know what brought that woman to that point. Sure. Man, I am pandering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, ladies, I fucking, yeah, I get cool it. That's you manspreaded while saying that, dude. Nice, man. Well, there's no women here that I'm whose seat I am usurping. <laughs> but, yeah, there is Cody. All right. Oh, um. <laughs> he cut his hair. Uh, We're just okay. going for punchlines here, guys. That's all. So it's all there, good fun. There is this guy that I saw on Twitter who is incredible. Yeah. And I think you're really going to enjoy him. I think him. I know him. I think. Yeah. Uh, wait, wait. You've seen this guy? Yeah, Carell? Yeah. Wait, you know who he is too? Yes. Well, fuck me then. I Carell feel like is an internet dipshit. legend, dude. Can yeah. you have you seen his face and yes. stuff? He's first of all, he's jacked. But can you do the other one instead? So now that you've seen it, so I guess it doesn't really matter. But I his his friend's theme song one is so good. I just love it. For those of you who haven't seen it or heard it, <sighs> bro. He's uh he's got himself. He's always got his camera set up. It's like an old. What kind of camera is that anyway it's like a it's like a um it's like a casting couch camera sorry that's just is that a picture of himself hanging on the wall can we play it yeah let corral do his thing (laughs) (laughs) he's a really good dancer Damn, damn. That little foot shuffle. Yeah. Foot all shuffle. It's like you're always stuck in second gear. This is a good one. Oh, yeah. I'll give it to him. I never knew what the lyrics to the friend song was. He makes them so clear. Look at those legs. I love it. All right. Well, I just love that he's been doing this forever and nothing has changed. In his whole life? No, like the... Yeah. Just always this. Huh. What are these TikToks there? I, I don't remember what these are that I put in the in the thing. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the show where we just watch fucking tick. Oh, have you seen this? Um, <laughs> no, but I guarantee I'll laugh. Wait, it's great. It's great. Here we go. Things you didn't know had names, part 12. You're going to think I made today's word up, but it's 100% real. Niggly wiggly. <laughs> what the fuck is that? <laughs> Things you didn't know had names. <laughs> I can't believe Joseph Gordon-Levitt has a TikTok, man. Wow. I can't believe Joseph Gordon-Levitt. Wait, what is Niggly Wiggly? Can we Google it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he said things you didn't know have names, and then he says it, and then the guy puts the wiggle filter on him. <laughs> what is the actual name of the little paper flag thingy? I yeah. pressed one of the moans. Wait, is that is that from the next one? Can we? What's the next one that we had? Oh, this guy I've seen on. Have you seen this? Dude? His the way. It's, so this guy's like a Nordic exercise guy, but the way it's shot this is, this is what so. What the was based on. It's weird because it looks pornographic almost. It wasn't Doesn't like because he's just naked. No, because like I don't know the way he's like in such sharp focus and the way the coloring looks it's like all right is someone gonna i don't know it just looks almost Con- contrast like he doesn't make me think of porn what does it make you think when you look at this porn i i usually think of as like uh like flat color grading sure like they like they like they bought a really expensive camera and they shot it in log but they have no idea that they shot it in log um that's a that's a cool like director joke that you don't understand. No, um, log is a color scale. Oh uh, wow! Ca- Damn, color Hell yeah. scale. True creative. Color. No, it's just like a, I can't remember. It's like a format that the format. footage is in that enables you to. Yeah. It just captures the most data, but it's just cool like director stuff you wouldn't understand. No, I but, don't. <laughs> but yeah, okay. So there's that but, guy. Uh, no, no, no. But I will give you this contrasty porn. I think. Like black on white. No, no, no. Like we're or saturated. <laughs> Is that yeah. what you call it? <laughs> no, no, I mean like, you know. Is that what you Um, I'm looking for a contrasting porn. <laughs> Racially contrasted porn. Well, sure, yeah, that's what they call it, right? Yeah. 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 You know what's fucked up, man? Me and my friend are talking about this like during the pandemic. It is absurd how fast like the 
police like politicized porn videos came out like like within like a month of George Floyd there was like weird like sure yeah we, we were just like what the fuck is wrong I heard you were trying to pass a fake 20 oh dude dude I too much no that's like oh that's what it, yeah it's yeah. like what they were doing mm. it's absurd how how porn is like you know it, it, it it's just crazy how much politicized porn I feel like we've had in the last couple of years. Yeah. Um, not that I've seen any of it, but <laughs> it's a very weird thing to call out. But anyway, I was going to say, I will give you that contrasted footage. I'll give you that. It, it can remind you of porn because I feel like there's more amateur porn out there and mm-hmm. that stuff is shot very like unintentionally moody. Like yeah. They have like one light in the room. It's like, pay $5 to see me get nailed by my boyfriend. And it looks super punchy like that. It's yeah. It's, there's something about it that reminds me of something, and I can't put my finger on it. But let's let's watch it again. Let's just see if we can unpack. This is there. This it, is maybe therapy it feels, for Ben. Maybe it feels hyper, like almost racist somehow. <laughs> I don't I don't know how, but it's like this you is just feel like, this is racially motivated. This somehow? is like almost like a not a dog whistle, but like a subliminal like, hey, white man, <laughs> you've got to get ready. It's coming, <laughs> you know. I think he's got the duct tape over his mouth because he's uh, he's doing that kind of breath training where you only breathe through your nose. Yeah, yeah. Remember when that was like the hot thing for a minute, where it's like, oh, mm-hmm. buy a thing that or put duct tape over your mouth when you sleep and stuff. No, I do. Rem- I do remember all the the gym freaks wearing the Bane mask when they. Oh yeah, out. sure. The yeah, the altitude that, mask. Yeah. Yeah. What was the third TikTok that I put in here? I don't even remember, and I put it in fucking last night. It's just porn. <laughs> it, oh. I, it's not going to be, oh, this guy. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> this guy. <laughs> this guy wanted your take on him. All right. He is, he came up on my For You page, and I thought it was so ridiculous that I followed him and saved as many as I could that I thought were interesting because he gives... He's like a, a motivational speaker almost exclusively for men. And his whole thing is trying to get men to come out of their comfort zone right. by doing just contrived shit, like having them get in front of the whole audience and screaming. Got it. And he intentionally makes them feel uncomfortable and makes himself look better by being like, hey, why are you acting so uncomfortable, man? Mm. Like, just get out of it. Right. Get out of it. Come on, just calm down. Yeah. Oh, And the guy's always like, okay, see, you're, you're, you're not doing it. Yeah. Get out of it. No, like, screaming at a your... <laughs> screaming at a room full of men is like super productive in learning how to like communicate with women. Oh, sure. And yeah. he always looks like dog shit. His <laughs> hair like, I don't know if he intentionally musses up his hair and and whatnot, but he always is wearing uh, like post hype beast status where it's like a torn up sweater and just Got it. really weird shit, but this this video is so funny. So you just gotta let it rip. It. Just yeah, let it rip. Say I'm your dad, your real dad. What would you tell me now? Here in front of you. I left you, never even thought about you one day. <laughs> no questions, nothing you want to ask me. Why did I leave you? Never come back for you. Trying to act all deep. Why was it your fault that I left? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, this guy should do stand up. This is like amazing crowd work. He was like a men's rights guy. No, here, give me a hug. Wow, great job. This is how cults are started. <laughs> Literally did nothing for this guy. Click his profile. I think one of his pinned videos is one where he like humiliates a guy. He, well, you know, you know what? It, Jared Leto actually does the same thing when recruiting uh, uh, innocent women into his cult. The uh, the the second row, second from the right, is is the one you're projecting your own weakness. This one's so good. He just trashes this dude. It's Seriously. the same guy. Like, here, watch. Full honest. I would just not want you near me because I sense zero authenticity. Some of the comments are like, <laughs> oh, this the coach is making like, the client uh, feel bad. That's some pretty harsh look advice. At him. Even look though at it's helpful, sunglasses. it's pretty yeah. harsh. I don't know. And they don't realize it's like, yo, this isn't first of all some random person in the street that I just dragged up. I'm like, you will listen to me now. And then what's the assumption is that everyone is so weak and pathetic that they can't handle it, right? It's like, why would you tell that to such a weak and pathetic person? What about giving power to the individual? 
What about, hey, maybe that person, that's you projecting onto them that they are so weak and pathetic. What if they're actually strong and they can handle it? And what if they are so sick of everyone outside of, say, a seminar room like this? Damn, he's speaking truth. To, like, weak and pathetic. Yeah. Be mean. Therapists should be more mean. Yeah. Wow, fucko, that really sucks. <laughs> Have you thought about not being a pussy, though? <laughs> Noel, um, I want to do an exercise for this virtual therapy session. session. Pretend I'm your dad, and I am just about to walk out because you're so fucking annoying. <laughs> you're just what so lame. Uh, well, I would say... Oh, man, I, I can't wait to leave. Uh, <laughs> Spit it out, I'm leaving. I would say... I don't understand oh, you're why just, you're, you're doing just it. Just as dumb as your mom. That's where you got those jeans from. And then everybody claps. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, just, I love how he's like, I don't, I don't even know what the point of this is because he's just going to keep doing what he's doing. But it's funny <laughs> that he's like, what? why does anyone think what I'm doing is is so offensive? And he just cut <laughs> just to the last clip and he's like, I'm your dad. Why is it your fault that I left? It's like, all right. I get what he was trying to do to get the guy to like say out loud and confront how stupid it is to blame yourself for your father leaving, but he does it in such a yeah I don't know just a uh, dumb way. And I wonder how much people pay to see this guy. I think that's the coolest part is that he gets people to pay to be an audience. Yeah, like that is cool. I kind of want to go. I kind of want to pay and see? go. Yeah, and just act pathetic. And then, I don't know. It's like a weird version of like an open mic. <sighs> Kinda. He's <laughs> just getting up there working material, and then when people don't like it, he's like, "Why are you such a fucking loser?" He's essentially doing crowd work. Yeah, he'll have people come up who are. He had one guy. Oh, dating. He's a dating coach. That's what he was. Yeah. Uh, That's what he was before. In yeah, before I remember now, <laughs> he had some controversy because he suggested <laughs> the headline of this CNN Chiron is. Dating coach suggesting aggression toward women. Is that what it's called? That lower thirds? A Chiron. A Chiron? I didn't know that. There's a Scrabble word for you. That's a that's a that's a cool like TV production thing that you know. Yeah, Chiron. That's awesome. Or a lower third, I think, is another uh, word yeah, for it. Yeah, that's the like cool director version that I know. The lower third. The lower third. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I'm part dead, of the lower third. Yeah. <laughs> nice. I don't know what that means, but baby, I'm in it. Yeah. I, I was thinking like dumb people. Yeah. Oh, I'm definitely, I'm for sure dumber than I was in like college. <laughs> I was so smart. Were you? Yeah. I had a, I had a good grasp on things. I was a philosophy major. I got straight A's. Nice. I was the top of my class in a couple of classes. That's so cool. I attribute it to Adderall, but. Sorry. I was being. That's so cool. Is that what you said? Dig, yeah. But it, it is cool. You got straight A's. That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's like really cool. Thank you. I'm proud of you. Th thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't now, know as, why, as why as you would think that that's not cool. As your as your as your dating coach, like mm -hmm. your your dad's obviously not around to right. appreciate those grades. So should I be more mean to women? Yeah. No, I, I'm. I still want to come back to that 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 headline. Dating coach suggests being aggressive to women. Like obviously, he thinks he has like a system around that. But what the fuck, dude? Hey, <laughs> I like your fucking face. I think it was negging and shit like that because yeah. that was the big thing with with um, men's rights and dating coach guys back then was like, hey, you know, if you emotionally manipulate a woman by being mean to her off the bat, yeah. Yeah. she's going to be tricked yeah. into wanting your approval. Yeah. And then you're going to get fucking laid, dude. Dude. So if, congratulations. And your dick's probably not going to work by the time you guys get back home. If you prey on a random innocent woman's like um, genuine outlook on life and her willingness to believe that, you know, people are actually good people, you can, you can kind of like flip that on its head and make her afraid of you in public yeah veiled threats yeah and aggressive make, physical yeah uh things yeah and grabbing her by the collar of her shirt yeah and and make her afraid to stand up to you and <laughs> that way she'll be so fucking into you dude. yeah yeah sorry yeah. i just wanted to press the button yeah, no it's okay uh i i just, think i've seen like i want to say i've seen clips of this dude he's starting to look familiar you probably have he's been around a while I, you know what is really weird now is how many young kids are getting 
they're because as much as like there's grown men paying for this like you know the majority of his views are probably like fucking 12 year olds it is weird that there's a bunch of kids just like getting their you know advice like their yeah male identity mm. concepts from this guy <laughs> yeah the thing for and for those young men out there who uh who might be inclined to lean towards searching on the internet it's really a simple uh f- formula take care of your body your mind will follow avoid drugs and alcohol be kind to yourself be kind to others have a modicum of self awareness yeah you know, try to keep in mind if you're just be mindful and like every couple minutes check in with yourself if you're on a date or in a social setting and be like, am I talking too much about myself? Ask questions, be interested, and uh, you know, just avoid creepy things. Like y- you should know. Yeah, it's like it's a really simple formula. Just like don't um, don't tell her she's ugly. Don't tell her she looks weird don't tell her she does not address um if it's something that if you have a sister <laughs> you'd be mad that a guy was saying to your see sister that, see that doesn't work really yeah because porn has just ruined oh, all right, young right. people yeah. yeah young men do be fantasizing about their siblings yeah I, I forgot what year it was but like the porn hub searches where incest just became so high oh in like certain parts of the world yeah well, it was like heavy in america yeah yeah. Well, people have hot sisters. <laughs> Can you speak to? Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I respect and love my sister. She's a great woman. She's a mom. But no, I didn't. I don't think I. Sorry. Oh, so you're saying your sister's an old bag? If she's watching, I mean, sorry, I'm spoken <laughs> for. So you're gonna get a text after this episode, <laughs> Ben. As your sister, I really thought you would have nicer things to say about me. Yeah, how do you compliment like women in your family without sounding You shouldn't have to worry about sounding uh weird because it's society's fault that you can't say like, yeah, my mom's hot. I think that's the same <laughs> philosophy Biden has. <laughs> <laughs> you should be able to say your sister's hot. You know, back in my day <laughs> I, 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 I took my sister to the prom. Took my sister to the prom, gave her a kiss. Give her a long kiss. Nowadays, that's weird. <laughs> Nowadays, yeah, they, they, they tell you that you gotta, you gotta go. And then I said, you gotta go. Uh, he just go. Yeah, yeah, with, yeah. You gotta go straight for the chest. <laughs> kiss her on the chest. Kiss her on the chest. Yeah. I saw a video of him eating ice cream. Someone sent it to me actually uh, on Twitter or something. I don't know how recent it is, but. You hear, it's just like close up on his face. He's wearing the aviators and he's eating ice cream in a cone. And they go, sir, sir, what flavor ice cream did you get? And he goes, chocolate, chocolate chip. And he's eating it and taking a bite. And then the follow-up question is, what would you say to the Republicans who are, you know, blocking da-da-da-da-da? There's a beat. And then he just goes, eat some chocolate, chocolate chip. (laughs) That's his message. It was great. I mean, he's clearly being funny. Yeah. Yeah. He's all there. But uh, yeah, no, he's definitely all there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw some clip of him the other day, just like some old TV clip of him, just like fully, just this. Younger? Y- well, younger, but then just, you know, like clearly a different point in his political career. And he's like, the Constitution defines marriage as between a man and a woman. Oh, yeah. yeah just like, that era. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how you can really see if a politician is uh has true has a true core set of beliefs or if they are um just just pandering i mean there is something to be said for a politician being willing to change their beliefs as times change but also not being brave enough to kind of be an outlier during times like that is uh you know i believe they would call that sus yeah well you see that on the subject of like the hot sister thing that's why Trump was, you know, he did so well because he just came out and say it. My daughter is very hot. Oh yeah, fuckable, <laughs> fuckable daughter. Yeah. She's very fuckable. Uh, he, yeah, there was an interview where he said, "Perhaps I'd be dating her if she wasn't my daughter." Yeah, that's pr- almost verbatim what he said. Yeah, and and every uh, <laughs> every handsy conservative guy really related to that. It's like he's he's spe- he's speaking honest, <laughs> and you gotta say, I mean, if we're gonna. <laughs> If we're gonna give kudos to him for anything, 
there's something to be said for someone in politics who has no filter and speaks honestly. Yeah, I mean, it is a pretty wild ass move to just get on TV or just in an interview and just be like, yeah, who knows? Maybe I'd be fucking my kid. <laughs> if there is truly a world of parallel universes that are never ending and where any possible iteration and uh, permutation of life exists, there is a world in which I am fucking my daughter. So <clears throat> He is president. His hair, not real. He has daughter. He <laughs> takes his daughter in time machine. They go time machine. They have sex. They are daughter and father in other universe, but not in this one. He is king. He is supreme ruler. <laughs> his daughter very hot. They have fucked up looking child. <laughs> <laughs> they replicate European history, messed up children from incest, many generations over. Have you seen that family of yes. um yeah. yeah, what are they called? The uh it wasn't like a Spanish royal family? No, here in the United States there is a family of um uh inbred there's an in, a famous inbred family and they're in Alabama or something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. They're Sorry called about that. the can you can you look up like the historical like inbred family? <laughs> in in Europe? Yeah. There's like a bunch of paintings done about them. Huh. Oh, the Whitaker family, yeah. Soft white underbelly. Look at these folks. Yeah, yeah. This shit is whoo, this oh is rough, my man. God. That is some hills have eyes stuff. There's no way these people wipe properly. I mean, you know? That's not what I'm worried about. There's no bidet. They they don't know what a bidet is. <laughs> Dude. Ah, sure, I just use my hand. <laughs> I that's cruel. I mean, these are people who clearly love their families so much. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah. They are uh that poor dog just has no idea. Why no. would it? Wait, so what's the other um uh look, look there's like a bunch of paintings done about this family that I'm thinking of. Um yeah, yeah, pull it up, pull it up. It really is funny how nature's way of saying, hey, don't fuck your sister is, yeah, is just the product of inbreeding. Like, yeah. hey, this is why you don't do it, because it kind of like, uh, it just doesn't work. <laughs> wow, look at that guy. Yeah, they, uh, I guess they came out like with these strange like facial features and stuff. Whoa. Yeah. Charles II of Spain. Ay, 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 man. Damn, you know, those bro. Spanish, a storied history. Yeah? Those yeah, they love they love their, uh, well, I guess. I mean, apparently this one family, but. I don't think it's Or maybe the them. artist just sucked. Maybe the best artist of the time just was like, I just can't do cheeks, chins, <laughs> mouths, and noses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just really, really bad artists. And they, <laughs> they were just looking, it. they're just looking mad normal. Yeah. And they just kept hiring his ass like, oh, he's like the only dude in town. It's like him or nil. Yeah, wow. <laughs> they look normal from the, the bridge of the nose up. Yeah. Huh. Well, good for them. They had a good run. Uh, wait, what else? Is, could we scroll down? What else do we have in this whole Well, I mean, we got to get into the bonus, so. Yeah, we had. We can just. Should we do, do the uh, uh, the queen as a hologram getting Oh, cut? yeah. Oh, yeah. The hologram but, uh, is good. Michael B. Jordan. Michael Doobie, the... Michael Doobie Jordan, when you think about it. Oh, God. Oh, God. Sorry. Coming up in the Bone Zone, everyone, we are going to um, discuss the Johnny Depp oh, victory. Oh, fuck yeah. I can't wait. I don't know how much too much, but you know, we'll talk a little bit about that. You know, steaming hot tea with Michael B. Jordan. Yeah. And, uh, and we might even get into the 2007 Spike TV Guys Choice Awards. Yeah, a winner a winner of a certain category that you're that you wouldn't expect. You would not expect the winner of the sexiest slit. Hint. <laughs> it's not a woman. It's, it ends with or mom. Oh, yeah. nice. Thank you. All right guys, this is in the Bone Zone, which you can see at uh, teamjustudios.tv. This week on the Bone Zone. I want to be a sniper. I respect anyone who could kick my ass. Yeah? Which is most people and children. Can you just, like, start a fight with me? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's just more like, I don't want someone's dad with their finger in my ass, and yeah, I'm accidentally it. hard. Watch the full episode by signing up for a membership at tmgstudios.tv.